Hi everyone, today we're going to be going over the Bitcoin miner revenue charts and how you can use these tools to help improve your Bitcoin investing and analysis. These charts, as well as many others, are all freely available on lookingtobitcoin.com, your number one source for Bitcoin information. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to ensure you're receiving all of our content as soon as it's released. So right now we're just on the fees of the minor revenue selection of charts we have here on lookingtobitcoin.com. And very quickly, we're going to cover exactly what we mean by minor revenue. So Bitcoin is built on top of what's called a blockchain network. Therefore, every 10 minutes, we have what are called new blocks that are mined and added to this open ledger where all transactions are included in these blocks and we can see every address and wallet on the network. Now, this open ledger blockchain technology utilizes what's called a proof of work consensus. And this proof of work consensus relies on individuals, institutions, organizations, a whole handful of different miners to actually secure the Bitcoin network, as each one of these blocks is not only including the number of transactions to allow the Bitcoin network to allow the peer to peer transactions, but it also secures the network to prevent double spends, miscalculations and any malicious users on the Bitcoin network. And these miners aren't just submitting their computational power to secure the Bitcoin network out of the good of their heart. Of course, some of them may be, but there are actually financial incentives for doing so. And this is where the miner revenue comes in. So there are two main revenue streams for miners for securing the Bitcoin network. And this is the first one, which is fees. So every Bitcoin transaction that happens on the network has to pay a Bitcoin transaction fee. If you imagine a credit card charge for individual users or businesses for using their credit card, it's a similar type of logic where every single transaction as a way to incentivize the miners and prioritize the transactions, a small fraction of the underlying amount of Bitcoin being sent is actually going towards a transactional fee. And this is the minor revenue earned from these transactional fees. And you can see it does have a positive parallel correlation with the underlying Bitcoin price. And this is usually just because as Bitcoin's price increases exponentially, usually indicates that more people are actually coming into the Bitcoin space using cryptocurrencies and sending them across the network. So for example, on this day, I've selected here December 22nd, 2017, just as Bitcoin was running up in its 2017 bull cycle, there was a total minor revenue in fees of nearly 1,500 Bitcoin at a price of around $13,700. Now this is about $20.5 million that miners on that day earned purely from transaction fees. We can also observe that as well as this positive correlation between price and the underlying amount of fees that miners earn, it does seem to be on a general downtrend. And especially as of recent, even regardless of the positive price action we had, the minor revenue in fees actually remained fairly low. And this is for a couple of reasons. Number one, a lot of users aren't necessarily using Bitcoin as a peer to peer currency that may have initially been intended to be used for. And this is purely because a lot of Bitcoin transactions, regardless of how cheap it may be to send the Bitcoin, still has some kind of fee. And for day to day transactions, such as buying a cup of coffee on a morning, you don't necessarily want to be spending any of that transaction just going towards a fee. So a number of Bitcoin transactions tend to be larger transactions and therefore we don't see this huge increase in network utilization like we used to see. The second reason, and it's twofold, is that Bitcoin as a technology is constantly improving. We've had multiple technological improvements on the actual underlying Bitcoin source code. As it's an open source project, we have a number of Bitcoin developers contributing to the long term success of Bitcoin. So new developments such as SegWit, as well as secondary chains such as the Lightning Network, are making Bitcoin transactions not only cheaper, but are providing layer two solutions to allow Bitcoin to be sent off chain and incur almost no fees. And we won't cover too much into the Lightning Network today, but if you are interested, we do have a number of charts on lookingtobitcoin.com covering what the Bitcoin Lightning Network is, as well as a learning section, which goes a little bit more into the Bitcoin Lightning Network. So as well as these transactional fees that miners are earning revenue from, there is also block rewards. So as discussed, there are two types of revenue that miners will earn for securing the Bitcoin Network. The first one being the fees and the second one being the block rewards. So in every single Bitcoin block that is mined, there are new Bitcoin entering the network. And this is the current inflationary rate of Bitcoin. And currently the Bitcoin block reward for mining a new block and securing the network is 6.25 Bitcoin. So about every 10 minutes, just over six new Bitcoin enter the Bitcoin network.
and these new Bitcoin go directly to the miners that are securing the network. So we can see here the Bitcoin block rewards. This is denominated in BTC terms. We can see if we look at a similar date to where we saw the peak in the Bitcoin transactional fees of miner revenue in December 2017, we can see here as Bitcoin was priced at $13,700, there was also a block reward of 1,937.5 Bitcoin. So as well as the $20.5 million in transaction fees that occurred that day, there was also about $26 million in rewards purely from the new Bitcoin entering the network. And if we look, we can see here one of the interesting things to know about Bitcoin as a currency is the inflationary rate of Bitcoin is at a very predictable decreasing rate. We can see here this Bitcoin block rewards actually decreases almost steps down every four years. Now this is due to the halving event and every four years the inflationary rate of new Bitcoin is cut in half. So we could see here in 2017 the block rewards for actually creating new Bitcoin blocks was 12.5 Bitcoins. It was twice what it is now, it's 6.25 and in just over a year's time this is going to half again to 3.125 Bitcoin per block as a reward. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that miners will earn less because even though the block rewards are being cut in half and during this period where block rewards may have been about 1,500 to about 2,000 Bitcoin per day, we can see here that the block rewards has decreased by 50%, so it sits at around 750 to maybe 1,000 Bitcoin per day. But you also need to consider the price increase of Bitcoin when calculating these rewards. So when we're up here in price at around $63,000, we had a Bitcoin block rewards that day of 1,075 Bitcoin. So even though the block reward for miners is halved, their earnings on that day will have been over $60 million and will have well over doubled their daily rewards, even though the block reward had halved. So what we can actually do is compare the miner revenue, the fees versus rewards, and we have this new chart here, which is showing us, depending on the background shading, the percent of their miner earnings based on fees and rewards. So you can see a vast majority of Bitcoin miner revenue comes from the actual block rewards that they're earning. And especially due to the fact, like we discussed before, a lot of the fees are actually decreasing due to new technologies that are emerging on the Bitcoin network as well as layer two solutions becoming more prevalent and just generally more cryptocurrencies available for people to use, trade and send. But finally, if we just collate the fees and rewards, we can see the total miner revenue chart here shows us the total amount of Bitcoin per day that are being earned by miners. And right now we can see that miners are currently earning about 800 to 1000 Bitcoin every single day for securing the Bitcoin network. And we can see somewhat of a positive correlation with the underlying price of Bitcoin when we see massive spikes in the miner revenue increasing, it may indicate that lots of new miners are entering the space, trying to secure the network and earn the block reward, therefore increasing the inflationary rate of Bitcoin by mining blocks more frequently than every 10 minutes. Along with that, more users using the Bitcoin network and increasing the amount of transaction fees is also gonna increase the miner revenue fairly substantially. And times like here where we saw the Bitcoin miner revenue decrease fairly substantially due potentially to lots of miners capitulating, Bitcoin price decreasing, as well as far few users actually using Bitcoin on the network and sending it from wallet to wallet. And these minor revenue charts are the basis of some other on-chain metric tools we actually have here on lookintobitcoin.com, such as the Pool Multiple, which is one of a number of great tools we have on lookintobitcoin.com for actually timing your buying and selling of Bitcoin with a very simple metric here of buying when we get into this green area here, which is calculated and is indicating that current miner earnings today are far below their yearly average. And once we actually reach this red zone up here, this sell zone indicates that miners are earning multiples more per day than what they they were historically just in the last year. So just to summarize, the Bitcoin miner revenue charts inform us of the revenue miners receive after mining a new block, both the transactional fees and block rewards. We can also see that miner revenue can increase or decrease due to network usage, mining difficulty, the current rate of Bitcoin inflation, which changes every four years after the halving events, as well as the underlying price of Bitcoin. And using this data, we can formulate new on-chain metrics to better understand the current state of the Bitcoin market and where we may be in a market cycle. And these metrics such as the Puel multiple are very accurate at doing so. If you like this video, then please visit lookintobitcoin.com. We're aware that Bitcoin data analytics can be complicated, but we want to help you understand these key principles so that you can optimize your Bitcoin investing and analysis. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to learn about all our other chats and gain even more market insights. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.